Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Red Wing Shoes, located in the shops at Centerpoint in Grand Rapids at the corner of 28th Street and the Beltline. The store has everything you need for the worksite or the woods. Stop in or check them out online at redwingshoes.com. And by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got a great show for you this week. We're gonna start out by taking you fishing on Lake Huron. Over here on the east side of the mitten, the fishing has only improved over the last several years. We're gonna show you a morning out on the water that was unbelievable. You'll wanna make sure you stay tuned for that. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other fun in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. It's hard to believe, but the bow season, well, it's only two months away. So on this week's show, we're going to do a little bow review and look at some of the new bows and a couple of the new crossbows that are on the market this year. We're also going to do a little long-range shooting on this week's show, but with some traditional guns. You won't want to miss this week's show. Lots of cool stuff. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy the wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan. Makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling and smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at AnglerQuestPontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years. Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Grindstone City sits on the northeast tip of the thumb here in the Lower Peninsula. You could miss it if you blink while driving through town, but Grindstone is a fishing town, so all roads lead to the marina and harbor here. I received a warm welcome when I got into town last Thursday evening and spent some time taking in the sights before an early start the next morning. I'd be hitting the water with Captain Dennis Cook of Finlander Sport Fishing Charters. Dennis and his wife own and operate the marina here in Grindstone City, as well as the rental cabins and Captain Morgan's Bar and Grill. Friday morning started out picture perfect with a gorgeous sunrise over Lake Huron. Morning Dennis. Morning. How's it going? Wonderful. Yeah? How's the fishing been out here? It's been really good. Yeah? So we got a little bit of wind this morning, so hopefully it won't affect the fish too much. Okay. Or the fisher people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going with us today? I have my daughter and we have one of the waitresses from the restaurant here, so okay. it should be pretty fun. Who's the first mate? You. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, awesome. So it's kind of a girl's trip, really. Yep. Sweet. Should be fun. What kind of fish do you expect to be catching out here? Uh, hopefully we'll be catching some lake trout, some steelhead, and possibly maybe even get lucky and get a salmon. Nice. So. How far are we going? Probably about seven miles to start. The girls settled in for the quick ride out to Dennis's go-to spot out here off the tip of the thumb. There's a pretty good reef that runs basically from Port Austin and it and it kind of runs northeast out to the tip of the thumb, uh, which we call the end of the world, and then it turns and heads back towards Huron City. So we're just kind of fishing along the edge, going with the waves. So just got in the depth of like one, 
125, 130, and just kind of went, you know, parallel to the ridge. Dennis was making quick work of setting the lines, something he actually prefers to do himself. He's been fishing these waters for many years now. Well, I started mating for uh, a captain named Craig Birch uh, on the Wander back when I was in high school when I was 14 and been doing it ever since. So getting close to that 30 year mark on, on taking trips and mating and just spending time on the water. So a lot of years. Dennis's years of experience were paying off this morning. He just got the last line set and the first fish of the day was on. His daughter Claire was first up to fight it in. Claire has been fishing her entire life and now that she's attending college and only home for the summers, she says she loves these fishing trips with her dad more than ever. And she was showing this fish who's boss. How's it feel? Not tired yet, but I'm sure <laughs> I will be. Claire was out here today with Sabrina Rice, another college student who works as a waitress in Grindstone for the summer. Sabrina was up next. I took a, actually my daughter and uh, one of the waitresses up at the restaurant here, so they were always bugging me to get out in the water, so it worked out that my charter that I had scheduled today canceled, so uh, I took them out and it turned out to be a very good day. Lady Luck was on our side, I guess. And they know what they're doing out there. <laughs> they did bit. a good job. While the girls were enjoying a double header right off the bat, things were about to get a little more exciting. A third rod went off, and Dennis joined in the fun. Now he just needed to figure out how to net the first fish without losing one. We were seeing firsthand how Lake Huron's fishery has made a comeback over the years. So we have a, a very good fishery here. It's mixed. We don't get near as many kings as we used to, but. We're still getting, you know, the odd king. We've caught a lot of coho this spring and summer, and the steelhead has been very great. Uh, we've been getting, the month of July has been excellent on steelhead. and A uh, few walleyes are starting to show up. They're still a little west of Port Austin, but of course our lake trout fishery is excellent, you know, probably the best in the state as far as consistency. Claire's lake trout on Leadcore was finally within sight of the boat. She did a great job battling what turned out to be a beautiful laker, and she loved every minute of it. Yeah, the lake trout I brought in uh, was a was one of the big ones I caught. Uh, it was way out there, and it takes a while to get them in, but your arm is definitely sore at the end, but it's worth it. <laughs> I've been fishing since I was maybe three with okay. my dad and grandpa, so yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, and what do you like about being out here? Oh, uh, I just love being on the water, having fun catching fish and being with my dad. Yeah, I like to get and spend time with my dad. Um, don't get to spend time with him much, because he's either out fishing or working, so. Nice. A shiny one. Yeah. <laughs> Is that coho? Yeah. Claire was enjoying our first silver fish of the day, a nice coho. The action was nonstop out here. As soon as Claire sat down, Sabrina was up and hauling in another one. <laughs> Looks like a decent fish. <laughs> Sabrina was in her glory out here. She says she loves fishing for one simple reason. Uh, the fact that I'm outside, I don't like sitting indoors, so that's one fun thing. And then it's like trying to reel in like a large trout or a salmon or any of that is really fun. As soon as Sabrina's fish was in the boat, a downrigger rod hit close to the boat and Claire was yeah, able to yeah. bring in our first king of the day. Sweet. Getting a little bit of everything out yeah. here. The fish just kept on hitting and Sabrina was enjoying her time on the water. Today's the first time I've been on Denny's Charter. Um, he's my boss so it was kind of fun being out here with him and goofing around. Uh, also being out here with Claire and everyone. Uh, favorite thing, probably uh, catching the first walleye. I hunt, I fish, hunting goose, geese, deer, turkey, um, fishing, trout, salmon, coho, and, like anything basic like that, uh, bass. Uh, outdoors, ATV, I do a lot of hiking and biking. 
With such an amazing fishery here in the Thumb, Dennis started a tournament last year that's really taking off. It's called the Captain's Memorial. I started it in honor of all the fallen captains uh, that used to fish out of this harbor and area. It's our second tournament, uh, which is going to be an annual event every year. It's at the end of July, the last weekend in July. Uh, we had a pretty good turnout last year, uh, guaranteed 10 grand first prize. So hopefully we'll have a, a little better turnout this year, get it up close to 50 boats would be nice. The fish just kept on coming. <laughs> Dennis says it's a challenge every day, figuring out what the bite will be on. Uh, pretty much everything bit on spoons today. We had some dodgers down there, but never even had a bite on one. So it was all a spoon bite. I'm sure it was more speed than anything. Where do you get people coming from how far away to fish with you here? Uh, we get people basically from all 50 states. Uh, seems like this year Texas is uh, where a lot of my customers have been. So uh, we got some people coming in tonight that are fishing with me in the next couple days from Pennsylvania. So kind of all over the place. Well, it's like 9.30. We're heading in because there's some uh, severe storm cells coming and we actually have enough fish anyways. Fish has been very good today. Got lucky and caught a couple nice salmon even. So now we're gonna go and get them cleaned up and eat them, the best part. <laughs> what an awesome morning on Lake Huron. In just a few hours, Dennis and the girls caught a walleye, six lake trout, a king and a coho salmon. The building waves and rough water only claimed two fish that were lost before the girls got them to the boat. Back on shore, Dennis switched hats from captain to fish cleaner and made quick work of filleting the fish for the catch and cook program here at Captain Morgan's restaurant. So we're going to do the fish two different ways. We're going to do uh, cut some up for frying. So it's a very light batter with some different seasonings in it and it's deep fried. And then we'll cut some up uh, to do pan fried uh, with some blackened seasoning. Uh, so they're both very good. My wife and I, we own the restaurant and we have some rental cabins and a rental house and we got the marina here. So it's kind of a nice little resort where people can come up and they can rent a cabin. They can go to the restaurant and have a good dinner and get on the boat and go out. And, and then after the, the fishing, go back to the restaurant and have to cook their catch. It's been a pretty big thing for us. You know, they get to eat that fresh fish that, you know, we just caught and Everybody bad mouths the lake trout on how greasy they are, and uh, once they taste it, they realize that that's just a big lie. Well, I can tell you firsthand, every bite of this fish from Dennis's kitchen is fantastic. Special thanks to Dennis Cook for showing us a great time on the water here on Lake Huron. Friends, family, laughs, and lots of fish. That's what summer days are made for, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, here we are at Jay's Sporting Goods at the Claire location. Today, we're gonna look at some compound bows. We're gonna look at a couple crossbows and kind of show you guys what's new on the market for this year. Well, when you're reviewing a women's bow, you gotta look the part. Well, the first bow we're going to review today is the Prime Logic. Now, to be fully transparent, this is the bow that I'm shooting this year, so I'm a little bit partial. The first time I got this bow, I pulled it out of the box, I couldn't believe the look of it. It's so much different than the normal primes, the bows that I've come to love. It's got the longer axle to axle. Um, they're usually a, a single limb bow. This bow is completely different. Split limbs, which is new for Prime this year. Um, it's a short axle to axle bow, which again, I normally am not a big fan of, but the first time that I shot this bow, kind of all my worry about the design went away. This thing shoots like every other prime that I've ever shot. It is incredibly smooth. Um, still got the parallel cams. It is a different design. It's a different style bow, but it's got a lot of those same features that Prime has had in the past. Uh, a little cosmetic thing that doesn't make a big difference, but it's got a nice matte finish on the riser. Um, and on the limbs, a lot of these bows have a glossier finish, which I've never been a big fan of. So uh, a lot of that same technology that we've kind of come to love in these prime bows, but a completely different package. Um, short axle to axle, still got a nice brace height. 
all in all, even though it looks different, it's got some of the same great qualities and I'm excited to hit the woods with it this year. Like most of the bows we're shooting in this bow review, this is another short axle bow, um, 28 inches axle to axle, but it seems like that's the, that's the theme this year is everybody's going short, uh, but you're not losing a whole lot. The Tri-Ax is a short axle, axle to axle bow. It's got six inches of brace height, but the shootability is there. It really is a smooth shooting bow. It's got these big concentric cams. Um, it's got roller guard here. Uh, it shoots very nice. The only thing I don't like about this bow is it seems a little top heavy. When I'm drawing back, it seems to be trying to pull the top limb back, the top half of the bow back. Um, more so than it is the bottom and so it's kind of tweaks on your wrist but once it gets back it is a nice smooth draw and once it gets back and you shoot it there is no vibration there i mean it, there's nothing on these bows we don't have any stabilizer or anything and when there's no vibration to begin with there's no vi vibration you have to take out before you start hunting with the bow so the triax nice shooting bow um, it comes in just right around a thousand dollars or a touch of above and uh it's going to be a good hunting bow this this fall Next up, we have the Bowtech Realm. Now, I've never been a huge fan of Bowtech bows. Just for whatever reason, they haven't fit me very well. Um, this bow, I have to say, I feel completely different about. This thing is really comfortable to shoot. Um, as you can see, it's got a, a very similar size and stature to a lot of these flagship bows that we're seeing. Shorter axle to axle, they got bigger cams, um, shorter limbs. That's kind of where the archery, archery industry seems to be headed. Um, so this bow is kind of in line with the, the way a lot of these bows look. It's got a glossier finish I'm not a huge fan of, um, but when you shoot this thing, it's incredibly smooth to draw and it is dead in your hand when you shoot it. It is a very nice bow. Um, and I, again, saying that from a guy who hasn't been a big Bowtech fan, I think they did a great job with this bow. Short axle to axle, it's fast, 340 feet per second. Um, some things to really like about this bow and definitely would be a good option to take in the woods this fall. Well, this is the Hoyt Hyperforce. This is in their aluminum series bows. They also have carbon bows as well that are a little more upper end. Uh, this bow is going to retail just under $1,000 or right at $1,000. This is 32 inches axle to axle, so it's a little bit longer than some of the other bows that we have in this bow review. Uh, as far as shootability, it's smooth. I like how I draw it back. Um, I really like the flat handle, the location grooves on the front to put my fingers in. Um, I really like that. And when you shoot it, it shoots very well. Um, it shoots very fast, 340 feet per second. Uh, the one thing is it feels a little like a little bit of strum, like the string is uh, vibrating after the shot. It's dead in hand, it doesn't jump at all, but there is a little strum from the string. I think as soon as you add anything to this bow, it's gonna quiet that down immensely. So a very nice shooting bow from Hoyt, once again. Well, when you're reviewing a women's bow, you gotta look the part. But uh, this is the Matthews Avail, and like all women's bows nowadays, these things have come a long ways. They're very shootable nowadays, very smooth. Um, this cam is just an ultra smooth cam. It's a very forgiving bow. Um, I like how it shoots, and nowadays, women's bows are much, much better than they used to be. The only thing I don't like is there's very little adjustability in the cam. You basically have to buy your specific draw length. It can't grow with a kid, so this would be something that would have to stay in that same draw length. Well, last but not least, we're gonna talk about a couple of uh, crossbows here. I don't have a ton of experience with them, but we just shot these two. You hear people talk all the time about the Raven crossbow, and it's got this narrow profile, so we wanted to shoot that. Um, and 10 point also makes a bow that's a, a similar setup, very narrow profile, very fast. We shot that. This is the Stealth NXT. We shot that versus the Raven. Uh, pretty comparable, a couple of notable differences between the two. The Raven is a little more expensive. Um, it kind of all depends on what model you get and what you add to that. Also, the Raven has a unique feature that allows you to let the bow down without having to fire an arrow. So after an evening hunt, if you're unsuccessful, you can let that down without having to actually shoot the bow. The 10 point, uh, one selling point for this bow is that it has a silent crank. Another big advantage if you're in the woods, you don't have to crank it up, um, make that extra noise. It's completely silent when you crank the bow. Um, lastly, when it comes to these crossbows, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in a future show, but it's important to be ethical. These bows can shoot accurate out to 80 or 100 yards. That does not mean you can hunt with them that far. They're fun to shoot extremely accurate, extremely fast, but when you're hunting game, it's still important to make sure that you can make a clean, ethical shot. 
Bow season will be here before you know it, and if you're in the market for a new bow, I would highly recommend heading to an archery shop and shooting a few different models. You never know which bow might fit you the best. Well, in our next story, we're going to do something just a little bit different. Long range shooting, that's not so different, but the guns that they're using, well, that makes this story rather unique. Each year in August, there's a group of shooting enthusiasts who gather at the Camp Grayling military base to shoot some targets, some really big targets, six foot squares to be exact. The bullseye itself is 10 inches in diameter. Seems quite easy, doesn't it? Well, when the shooting line is over a half a mile away, it gets a whole lot more difficult. But it gets even harder. These shooters are using black powder rifles, and most use iron sights. To say this is a challenging shoot would be an understatement. This is a NRA black powder regional. We shoot 800, 900, and 1,000 yards, um, 15 shots each at all three distances the first day, um, 10 shots each at 1,000 yards um, twice the second day, a total of 65 shots. The MRPA is the only organization in the state of Michigan that the NRA um, acknowledges for any scores or events. Um, any um, of our competitions, you can set uh, NRA national records. You can also set state records with us, but we're the only organization that the NRA um, acknowledges. Today, we're shooting 1,000 yards, and it's a black powder target rifle, cartridge and I refer it to a buffalo rifle. If people, if they've ever saw the movie Quigley Down Under, that type of rifle. And the bullet I'm shooting today, I have to wipe in between each round. And you do that to clean the barrel before the next shot, and it improves your accuracy. My husband does all the reloading. 80 grains of powder, so 4570 is 45 caliber, 70 grains of powder, but he puts a little extra in for the 1,000 yards. It really doesn't kick, it has a push, but it's not uncomfortable as long as I wear a shooting pad. After the shooters take a shot, their targets are lowered behind the berm where scores are stationed. Safely behind the hill, targets are checked, scored, and a system of markers indicate if the target was hit, what the score was, and where it was struck. Okay, we've started to shoot here at the Black Powder Championship. Uh, you see there's value discs up there. The bottom two are uh, value discs, and the one on the right in the, on the right side is uh, um, the spotter where the, the hole. Now this actually is showing a miss. Two reds down the bottom shows a miss, and it was off to the right center. And we take on the next hit, we'll pull the target down, change that, hopefully it'll get a hit on paper and it will show the score and then those value discs will show the actual play. Now we just took a shot, Paul's pulling down the target. Miss high right. Miss high right this time. We're just getting set up here so this is a little bit slow. And the target goes back up again. We'll wait for the next shot. There, we got an impact. Uh, she has a nine at six o'clock. She's about uh, 18 inches low of dead center. Very nice. At a thousand yards. Pretty happy with that, huh? Yeah. Well, she'd be happy if it was middle. That X is 10 inches in diameter. That's, that's the bullseye you're aiming at. If you hit it, what's that pin on your, on your hat there? Ah, if you hit it, we give you one of these pins to signify that you hit a 10 inch circle at a thousand yards. So you've done it before, huh? I have a hat full. <laughs> I don't think I've ever missed uh, the times we've been here that I haven't got one. Uh, sometimes you only get one for the weekend, sometimes three or four. The most I've ever seen people get maybe is seven or eight. And we've had people shoot for 35 minutes and not hit paper. It, it's just, the wind, it's so frustrating, but it's, it's so challenging, this compared to a modern shooting. amazing. My 10 year old just shot his first shots at 1,000 yards and uh, hit the target both times with an 1885 Winchester high wall with the scope. First time ever. 
As a gun nut myself, it was absolutely amazing to see these old style black powder guns lobbing bullets into targets at a thousand yards. To do this takes dedication and persistence. Special thanks to the Michigan Rifle and Pistol Association for inviting us out to the 1,000 yard firing range. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. We've got all sorts of fun in store for you here this summer on the TV show, so you'll want to make sure you stick around and join us in the upcoming weeks. We'll take you out musky fishing on Lake St. Clair. We'll be over on Lake Michigan doing some big lake fishing after some more groundhogs. All sorts of fun headed your way. If you're wondering where we are on a daily basis, you can keep up with us online. Well, Jenny, online is a great way to kind of keep up with us here at Michigan Out of Doors. Of course, you can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there, all the recipes, lots of good stuff. And if you do the social media thing, we're on several of the different platforms, and you can kind of check us out, see what we're up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks. We've been on the water a lot. Uh, just got off the big water in a couple different spots around the state. That'll be coming soon, and lots of good stuff. So, hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By the locally owned and operated members of the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, who provide oil heat with bioheat, a renewable fuel source designed to benefit the home and the environment. Details on the web at useoilheatmichigan.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man.